Hey, how's it going everyone? This is why I am here and today we're going to be doing another informal test. So what I have set up right now is my Panasonic GH5 and right next to it is my Blackmagic Ursa. This is the full version of the Blackmagic Ursa and I've been using this for my green screen. So what we're going to test is how good the Panasonic GH5 with its 422 10-bit color depth does against my Blackmagic Ursa, which has done an amazing job and over time I've actually tweaked it to where I really like what it's doing for my green screen work. So we're going to go ahead and compare the two. We're going to be doing 4K at 30 frames per second and we're going to see which one does better. Now the Panasonic one can only do 422 10-bit and the Blackmagic Ursa can do 422 10-bit and also HQ which gives more color depth uh, on the uh, ProRes settings. It can also do 444, but since the Panasonic cannot do that type of color depth, we're just not going to worry about it. Besides the file sizes at that point on the Blackmagic Ursa, it is ridiculously huge. So that's not something that we're going to compare against, but I definitely want to compare these two. And also to show you what kind of motion blur we see using a green screen when we actually have a lot of fast motion. So let's go ahead and get into the test. So we just got done recording the two clips. So one of them was both cameras on 4 to 2 10 bit. And then I switched the Blackmagic Ursa over to HQ. So we're going to go ahead and compare them. So I went ahead and dragged them onto the uh, Adobe Premiere Pro timeline. And I already added the Ultra Edit. So right now the green screen's already uh, added on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to switch it over to the Alpha channel. So let's see there it is so this is the alpha channel uh, let me go back a little bit to where I'm not waving my hands now uh, one thing I do want to say is this right here is the Panasonic GH5 let me go ahead and switch over to the Blackmagic Ursa and I want to select also the alpha channel for this you'll notice on the Blackmagic Ursa um, the green screen obviously is working better but you got to keep in mind, this green screen is um, was created specifically to work with where the Blackmagic Ursa is currently planted. And it was specifically set up for the Blackmagic Ursa. Whereas with the GH5, um, it was just placed near the camera. So if I had time to tweak it, it would be much closer to what you see over here with the Blackmagic Ursa. So what you're seeing over here is, um, it's actually... I know it looks bad because there's a lot of white areas that it's not masking out, but it's actually not bad. The reason for a lot of the whiter areas is actually just because it's not placed where the Blackmagic Ursa ca camera is. If I had time and this was my primary shooter for the green screen, I can get it to look pretty similar to what the Blackmagic Ursa is doing for the green screen. What really what this really shows me is that it's doing a really good job of actually picking up the green and then trying to mask it out. So if you come in here, we'll go to matte generation and we'll go to the pedaling. If I go ahead and just use it on the Panasonic GH5, let me just highlight that one. Then I start moving it out. You see around by the 50s, let's just say, oh, it gets really high in order to get out that like that area right there um, but I mean like I said before that area would generally not be a problem but I would say even where it's placed right now by the time we get into the upper upper six around 60 for pedaling we're going to get a really nice green screen so if I went ahead and go back to the composite you'll notice that it's all black uh, in the background so it's masking very nicely of the green screen if I go over to the Panas or go over the Black Magic Ursa, if I do the same thing, I'll highlight that. Um, it was at zero before because it's geared specifically for the position of the Black Magic Ursa in its framing. I don't go have to go near as high. I can probably get away with in the 40s, but it kind of shows you in general. Panasonic GH5 is doing very fine for green screen work. Uh, it looks great. Let's go ahead and do the playback and see what it looks like in the composite. Alrighty, so this is a going to be test of the 422 10-bit. So right now I have both cameras recording and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and quickly shake my hands 
and we're gonna see what it looks like in post when I do that. Hopefully one of them or both cameras will be very similar to each other, but we will see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Blackmagic Ursa on 422 high quality and see if there's a difference between 422 high quality and 422 10-bit. Alrighty, so this is a going to be test of the 422 10-bit. So right now I have both cameras recording and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and quickly shake my hands and we're gonna see what it looks like in post when I do that. Hopefully one of them or both cameras will be very similar to each other, but we will see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Blackmagic Ursa on 422 high quality and see if there's a difference between 422 high quality and 422 10-bit. So this right here is going to be a test of the both cameras. The Panasonic GH5 is still on 422 10-bit, but I went ahead and switched over the Blackmagic Ursa to uh, 422 high quality, so that's gonna give a better performance. Gonna go ahead and shake my hands real quick, and we're gonna see how well it does with motion again. So this right here is going to be a test of the both cameras. The Panasonic GH5 is still on 422 10-bit, but I went ahead and switched over the Blackmagic Ursa to uh, 422 high quality, so that's gonna give a better performance. Gonna go ahead and shake my hands real quick, and we're gonna see how well it does with motion again. So that was a quick look at what the two edits look like between the Panasonic and the Ursa. They were very quick edits. I didn't really want to go into any grading or anything like that. I just wanted the raw footage with a little bit of editing just to get rid of the green screen and to see how it looks. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Overall, I think the Panasonic GH5 is doing a great job. I think if I didn't have the Blackmagic Ursa, I would have no problems using it as my green screen machine. Uh, I think it does a fantastic job. Really great machine for doing this type of work. But obviously, the better the color grade, the better the green screen is. So if you have a camera that can actually do more color depth, you definitely want to take advantage of that. But it was kind of interesting. I think the performance on the GH5 kind of speaks for itself. You can, you know, tell me what you think in the comments below on what you think the GH5 is. I uh, apologize for the uh, audio quality between the 1080 bits because I actually forgot to turn on the mic. And that was the audio directly from the Blackmagic Ursa. I had to clean it up and just live with the fact of the bad quality audio. But hopefully you got the gist of everything that was going on. If you have any questions or if you want me to do any more tests, please let me know. But I will be moving this studio to uh, the office at the warehouse. So I am going to be breaking this down. So I won't be able to do another video for quite a while. But it was fun to do that, and now we're going to be moving the studio to something with a bigger room and more ability to do other things. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks again for watching.